fluids under pressure perform many valuable functions in industrial applications. For example, turbines are powered by steam that's under tremendous pressure, and gases under pressure are used for welding. But if pressure becomes too great, it can cause damage and injuries. To prevent such problems, a fluid system must have a means for relieving excess pressure quickly and safely. Various devices are used for this purpose. Rupture discs are often used in systems where problems with excess pressure are relatively unlikely. Relief valves, which open gradually, are primarily used in systems that handle pressurized liquids. In gas or steam systems, however, safety valves are used. They're able to quickly let out large volumes of gas or steam to relieve excess pressure in the systems. Safety valves are commonly used on gas or steam lines because the volume of the gas or steam increases as pressure decreases, and a gas that's under pressure may expand to a tremendous volume when the pressure is relieved. One thing all safety valves have in common is that they open wide very quickly and stay open until the system pressure drops a predetermined amount below the point at which the valve is set to open. The valve allows a large volume of gas to escape as pressure is reduced. In this part, we'll look at a huddling chamber safety valve. This type of safety valve is named for a small space called a huddling chamber that's located just below the valve's disc. The valve has an adjusting ring that's used to direct escaping steam either toward or away from the disc. The valve body directs the flow of pressurized fluid. The disc and seat seal the system closed under normal pressure. The disc is mounted on a stem. A spring holds the disc in place and the valve stem transfers tension from the spring to the disc. The release lever is used to trigger the valve manually while the system is operating to make sure that the valve works properly. The disc has a lip or shoulder that isn't exposed to system pressure when the valve is closed. The lip of the disc sits above the huddling chamber. The center portion of the disc, which is located over the valve's inlet, is always exposed to system pressure. The purpose of the huddling chamber is to help expose a greater area of the disc to escaping fluid when the valve opens slightly. The fluid pressure acting on the increased area gives a greater total lifting pressure against the spring. The pressure at which the valve's disc begins to lift off the seat is called the valve's set pressure. The pressure at which the valve actually pops open is the popping pressure. In most cases, simmering occurs briefly before a safety valve opens fully. During simmering, the disc is only slightly lifted and the valve discharges a small amount of fluid. Simmering lasts for only a fraction of a second until system pressure acts on the lip of the disc. As the disc lifts, the lip of the disc is suddenly exposed to system pressure. Since a larger area of the disc is now exposed to the pressure in the system, more force is being exerted on the bottom of the disc. This increased force overcomes the spring tension and causes the disc to pop open to about a 60% open position. When the valve's popping pressure is reached, the valve should open with a clean and sudden pop. If the pressure in the system continues to increase, the velocity of the escaping fluid will also increase causing the disc to gradually lift higher until it reaches the fully open position. Since the initial opening of the safety valve is about 60 percent, a large volume of fluid is allowed to escape quickly. After the excess pressure in the system has been relieved, the system pressure will begin to drop. As pressure decreases, the velocity of the escaping fluid also decreases. Spring tension begins to take over, pushing the disc down. The spring tension in a safety valve is preset, and it must be correct for the valve to operate properly. 
When the system pressure drops to the point where the valve popped open, 1,000 PSI in this case, the valve doesn't close because the lip of the disc is still exposed to the pressure and velocity of the escaping fluid. When the system pressure drops to a predetermined value below the valve's popping pressure, the disc drops down on the seat, closing the valve. This predetermined value is the valve's reseating pressure. Typically, as the force of the escaping steam is lost, the valve shuts suddenly. A small cushion of steam trapped in the huddling chamber keeps the disc in the seat from slamming together hard enough to be damaged as the valve snaps shut. When the disc is firmly in place against its seat, the valve is said to have positive seating. Positive seating is important because it keeps the valve from leaking fluid through the disc and seat. The distance that a valve disc moves from the closed position to the fully open position is referred to as the valve's lift or travel. Adequate blowdown helps prevent a condition called chattering. You see, if there's no difference between a valve's popping pressure and its seating pressure, the valve disc will jump up and down on its seat until pressure either increases enough to pop the valve open again or decreases enough to keep it closed. This condition is called chattering because of the sound that the disc makes as it moves up and down. Chattering can seriously damage both the disc and the seat because it promotes steam cutting. Steam cutting occurs when the velocity and the temperature of the escaping steam are so high that the steam cuts into the metal of the valve's disc or seat. Blowdown can be adjusted by changing the setting of the valve's adjusting ring. You see, the position of the disc in a safety valve is determined by the amount of system pressure and the angle and velocity of the steam striking the disc. When the adjusting ring is in the raised position, the escaping steam is directed right at the disc. The velocity of the escaping steam exerts a great deal of upward force because most of the steam is aimed to strike the disc closer to a 90 degree angle. In turn, the system pressure must drop well below the popping pressure of the valve before the spring can force the disc back onto its seat. So raising the adjusting ring increases the blowdown of the valve. If the adjusting ring is lowered, it's easier for the steam to escape to the side of the disc, so much less escaping steam strikes the disc on its way to the valve outlet. The velocity of the steam exerts less upward force on the disc, and more system pressure is required to hold the disc open. So with the adjusting ring in the lowered position, the valve closes against higher system pressure than it did when the ring was raised. Lowering the adjusting ring, then, decreases the blowdown of the valve. 